continue this series on the final 42 months, talking about the final 42 months of this current age. And uh, in today's discussion, we're going to have a look at the event because we're looking at uh, key events that must take place over that final 42 months. And in today's discussion, we're going to have a look at the key event of the Great Tribulation. Um, and the passage of scripture that we'll open up with today around this discussion is in Revelation chapter 13, verse 5 through to 7. Scripture says, And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, <coughs> excuse me, and those who dwell in earth, in, he in heaven, sorry. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. So we see this passage of scripture is referring to the person of the Antichrist. And we see that right from the outset of his uh, uh, final period of reign of 42 months, that is when um, that assassination attempt will take place on his life in the temple. From that point, he will begin his reign of terror in the earth. And um, we see from this passage of scripture very clearly that that period of time given to him to reign in the earth in this manner will be for 42 months. Um, and the, the reign of terror that he will uh, bring about in the earth will be primarily focused against the Jews and against uh, the Lord's saints because uh, the, his uh, reign of terror will begin in the nation of Israel. We've already seen that when he survives that assassination attempt that the Muslim armies will invade the nation of Israel, overrun them, and the Jews and a lot of them will be killed at that time and the rest will be taken into, uh, into captivity, into concentration camps. Um, but the Bible talks about the fact that he will make war with the saints and overcome them. So he will institute great persecution against uh, the, the Jews and also the Lord's saints throughout the earth. It will begin from that location, from Israel, and it will very quickly spread throughout the surrounding nations of the earth into the rest of the earth. Our Lord, in speaking around the same uh, event, um, gives us insight into it in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 24, verse 1 to 22. The Lord speaking, he says, For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And so, um, the church is not appointed to wrath. The Bible is very plain on that issue, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. And so, before the wrath of God is poured out on the earth, the church will be caught away from the earth in the rapture. However, the church is appointed to tribulation. And again, we pick that up in 1 Thessalonians 3, 3. So, though the church will not expo be exposed to the wrath of God being poured out on the earth, the church will certainly be exposed to the period of the Great Tribulation. Our Lord called it the Great Tribulation. Um, now, when our Lord was um, talking about this event and expounding on it, He said that the time of tribulation at this point, in this particular period, will be greater than anything that's ever been experienced in the earth before. And so, if you go back in uh, historical records and you look at different um, seasons of persecution that have broken out against um, uh, racial groups, etc. in the earth, well, think about the Holocaust for argument's sake. Um, you know, our Lord says that those periods will not be comparable to the period of the Great Tribulation. So it's a pretty sobering comment that the Lord made about the fact that this is going to be a very trying time for the Jews and the Lord's saints in the earth. Now, what uh, God the Father does is that He limits 
the period of time that the Antichrist gets to reign in this manner on the earth. And he, he limits his reign to 42 months. Now the Lord gives us some insight as to why God made that decision. He says, for unless those days had been shortened, because he talks about the fact that God the Father shortens the days for the elect sake, talking about the saints of God. And our Lord says, unless God did that, no flesh would be saved. So what is he talking about? He simply means that if the Antichrist was given full reign in the earth for a, a lengthier period of time, then by the end of uh, his reign, there will be no saints alive on the earth because all of them would have been martyred by that time. So uh, in order for there to still to be saints alive on the earth when our Lord comes back to the earth, because our Lord's second coming will take place at the end of the Great Tribulation, um, that, that 42 month period. So unless God had limited his time in the earth, uh, so many saints would have been martyred during that time, there'll be none left alive. And so what God has decided is he gets to reign for 42 months, no more. Um, and the reason being, obviously, is because he will uh, install wholesale slaughter of the Lord's saints in the earth. You uh, talk about six million Jews being uh, killed during the Second World War by the Nazi regime. Well, there'll be a lot more saints uh, and Jews that will be killed in that uh, 42 month period by the Antichrist and by his followers during that period. It's going to be a rough time. Uh, we pick up the fact that uh, the Lord's saints will be martyred for during that period in Revelation 15 verse 2 to 3. Now there is an individual that will go out into the earth that will instigate the persecution of the Lord's saints in more and more nations during this three and a half year period. And we pick up that account in Revelation chapter 13, verse 13 to verse 17. The scripture says, He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And we know that the scripture talks about that number being 666. And so this passage of scripture is referring to the person of the false prophet. And so we see from scripture that the false prophet is the one who will be instrumental in uh, spreading the um, message of Islam in the earth under the reign of the Antichrist. And so he will go into the nations and convince more and more nations to follow after the Antichrist and come into the fold of Islam. Now, when he does that, one of the very effective tools that he will use is that he will introduce into all the nations that come into the uh, Muslim fold to accept the mark of the beast, which is that number, which will be on the, on the um, hand or on the forehead of individuals, um, the right hand or the forehead of, of individuals. Now, obviously, the saints won't accept that mark. And because they won't accept that mark, um, it'll be, this tool will be very effective in flushing out the saints, trying to hide in the general populations in which they live, because because the saints that won't carry the mark, they will be very quickly identified as being um, saints of God. And so they will therefore be taken into uh, um, captivity uh, for the purposes of being exterminated, being martyred for the Lord. So it's going to be a very trying time for um, our, our Lord's saints during this period, this three and a half year period. Um, 
one of the things we pick up from this passage of scripture um, is that if the if nations are have a, a greater uh, influence of Islam in their uh, current populations they will be very susceptible to falling under the reign of the Antichrist a lot quicker because it will begin obviously in the Middle East and will spread out from there so what will happen is that the false prophet will visit uh, nations in the, in the earth and convince those nations to follow after the Antichrist now when they do they will adopt this law of, it, of uh, enforcing the mark of the beast and the saints will thus therefore become very quickly identified in those nations. Um, and so what Christians should be aware of even today is, you know, nations that in which they dwell, if there's a significant portion of the population that is Muslim, uh, then they should become a little bit weary because it is those nations that will very quickly fall under the uh, reign of the Antichrist during that time period. Um, what is interesting to see is that even today we have a kind of a foretaste of that event, the Great Tribulation taking place. Because we have this uh, current movement that has begun in one location and spread out very quickly throughout the earth called Black Lives Matter movement. Now that movement is very closely aligned with Islam um, and it's interesting to see that that movement, um, you, you see quite often, you see uh, churches being burnt, you see synagogues being burnt, you see Bibles being burnt, but they will not touch the Quran and they won't touch uh, mosques. Why is that? Because they are very closely aligned um, with Islam as well. And so it's just giving us a bit of a foretaste as to what to expect going forward because that, that particular movement has grown very quickly in the earth and it's a very um, instructive uh, process for us to see what happens is that as the movement comes into communities so people are very quick to embrace it and bow their knees to it and accept whatever doctrine they put across because you know they don't want to experience any kind of persecution well it's pretty much what will transpire at the end of the age when the Antichrist and the false prophet begin to reign in the earth. Um, they will go into the various nations of the earth and those nations will uh, very quickly bow their knee, adopt the mark of the beast and as I say it's uh, the Muslim um, communities will be exempt and all those who embrace um, Islam at that time will be exempt but the Christians obviously not. Now our Lord also made a comment around this period, this three, last three and a half years, in Luke's Gospel, Luke 17, 22, he said, Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And so there will come a time, and obviously during this period of time, where the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will no longer be openly proclaimed in the earth. The, the Church of our Lord will have to go underground uh, throughout the earth. Um, and we, as he said, you know, you guys will desire to see days when you could proclaim the gospel freely and practice uh, Christianity freely in the earth, but that, that will come to an end during this particular period of time. Now, at this time, in that last three and a half years, uh, there will be no salvations taking place in the earth among the Gentile population, because by that time, the fullness of the Gentiles would have come into the kingdom of God. Um, the only salvations that will still take place during this last three and a half years is amongst the Jewish population. And we'll touch on that in the next teaching when we look at the Lord's two witnesses. But among the Gentile population, no more salvations will be taking place. The gospel will no longer be openly proclaimed in the earth. The church will be driven underground. Um, and so it'll be a very trying time for the saints in these last uh, 42 months, final 42 months of this current age. But we do know that the end of that 42 month period will usher in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a, it's a rough period to go through. Um, a multitude of, of the Lord's saints will be martyred during that particular time. Um, 
But as we say at the end of the time, the good news is our Lord Jesus Christ uh, will return to you. And we're going to end the teaching on that one.